Why don't you start by, I guess, explaining to our, our audience what is functional nutrition or and is it different from functional medicine? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think it's important that we establish that. So when it comes to a functional practice, whether it's functional medicine or functional nutrition, there are three primary tenants that ideally make that practice functional. And those three tenants are a therapeutic partnership, looking for the root causes and a systems-based approach. And so for me, as I was starting to do work and coming from a very different background, I found real alignment with the practices of functional medicine. Now, functional medicine is gaining traction today, which is awesome. And yet it's kind of moving away from those three primary tenants. So if I just look at those three primary tenants, a therapeutic partnership means that there is a partnership between the provider and the patient, that they are equal partners in many ways. The provider is not the God, they are the guide. And every patient, you and I as patients, have an expertise that the provider cannot have. We have expertise in ourselves. And we'll talk more about that today, I'm sure, as well. When we look for the root causes, it means we're asking, why is this happening? Not just what do I do about it? And we live in a culture, especially with social media, of I have this pain, I have this ache, I have this diagnosis, what do I do about it? What's the fix? But functional medicine and functional nutrition ask why. Why is this happening and how do I look upstream for what's manifesting downstream. And a systems-based approach means we recognize that the body is an ecosystem. So as we know today, the gut is connected to the brain. We know a lot more about the mind, body, spirit. We can also understand that hormones are connected to the liver and detoxification, which is connected to the gut. So we understand systems biology. And then I'm also a real lover of systems thinking, so mental models that help us to consider how we solve complex problems. So those three primary tenants, therapeutic partnership, looking for the root causes, and a systems-based approach are what make a practice truly functional. And then when we think about functional medicine and functional nutrition, that just really comes down to the modalities that we use. So in functional medicine, they're still diagnosing and treating. In functional nutrition, we're assessing, recommending, and tracking repeat. We're really working with all the factors that impact uh, growth, metabolism, and repair in the body at a more day-to-day level. So all the things that you would do on your own versus what you'd go to the doctor for. Okay, got it. So functional medicine is like you're treating something and then functional nutrition is just general well-being, right? With I wouldn't think and- of it as just well-being. I would think of it as addressing the environment in which the diagnosis exists. So let's say right now I'm working with somebody with severe eczema. Curing his eczema is not my job. Curing the environment in which the eczema is manifesting is how I think about it. So it's not just, let me help you feel good or lose weight. It really is based on chronic conditions, but it's recognizing those chronic conditions exist in an environment. If I think about my late husband's brain tumor, not my job to cure his brain tumor, but that brain tumor exists in an environment and it is my job to say how... Can you describe what the environment means? Like what you mean when you say environment? Yeah, the whole body's ecosystem. So if we look at our hormone issues, we can say, yes, that's the tip of the iceberg. I call it the branch on the tree. But how do we think about food, movement, environment, and mindset, and the ways that those factors influence the expression of that sign, symptom, or diagnosis? So it's very specific to the individual, not only in the recommendations, but also in understanding, does this individual have issues with food from their history, from their culture? What's their relationship with their body, with dietary change? All of those factors become a part of the equation. So instead of just thinking through wellness in general, which is a word I have a bit of a problem with, (laughs) um, we're thinking about this individual, how do they sleep? How do they poop? How is their blood sugar 
for the environment that's allowing for the expression of that sign, that symptom, or that diagnosis. Okay. Got it. It seems like there's so much that you have to look at because like you said, the whole body is a system. Everything's interconnected. Is it difficult for you to tell what causes what? And then I guess, where do you even start, right? (laughs) Yeah. So we're never looking at it as a direct cause and effect. So when we look at those roots, I will say any sign, symptom, or diagnosis that we're talking about, like I said, is a branch. So We can name the signs, symptoms, and diagnoses that we hear people talk about. PMS, endometriosis, migraines, right? All the things we hear people talk about every single day, those are branches. Anything that we can name as a sign, a symptom, or a diagnosis is a branch. When it comes to the roots, anything that's chronic, where which is where functional medicine and functional nutrition do their best work, is where we go deeper to those roots. And in functional nutrition, we look at the soil. So the roots with any chronic condition from my lens are the genes, digestion, and inflammation. Those are the roots, but each of those roots exist in soil. And then I have that circle of influence around each of those roots. So with your genes, I can't change your genes, but I can influence the expression of your genes. So if we're dealing with something like breast cancer that has a genetic component or Alzheimer's that has a genetic component, it's not my job to say, how do I target the diagnosis. Instead, I'm thinking more broadly about what's leading to that situation. And that gives me a way in. So to answer your question about where we start, we start with a really deep assessment of that individual. So we're getting out of the X for Y. Here's the supplement or the protocol for that condition. And we're understanding the person. How are you born? What order, what's your birth order? Where were you born? What's happened through your lifespan? We're really understanding you and that gives us some clues, but we're always starting in certain places that help us to kind of clear the muddy waters. I call it the non-negotiable trifecta, sleep, poop, blood sugar balance. If you're not sleeping, if you're not pooping, your PMS is not going to resolve. Your hormone issues are going to persist. So we keep chasing some fix. And instead, we're thinking more broadly about how to access what might be occurring and seeing what shifts through that process. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So can you repeat? It was like genes, inflammation. What was the third one again? Genes, digestion, and inflammation. So I'll always tell people like, If you're talking about nutrition without talking about digestion, that's not functional because digestion is where food meets your cells, meets your physiology, right? So we have to optimize the body's function. I love that there's just three because it makes it simpler. Oh, that's where you start. (laughs) Always three. I always have threes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So tell us more about understanding our root causes. Cause I think a lot of listeners, they either experience or know people who experience some sort of chronic illness or something autoimmune. So like how we're always focused on the surface level. How do we understand the root cause and identify and address them? Yeah. So I think there are ways that we can slow down and stop seeking. So we end up, and you talk a lot about this in your different conversations in terms of mindset, we end up in a very sympathetic dominant state. That's a fight or flight state when we are looking for what is the cause? What is the root? What's wrong with me that I need to fix myself? And we're looking and searching and we get very stuck in the pill, the protocol, the practitioner. What's going to be the answer? And I really like to take us to that model, that three roots, many branches, and that focus on the soil to say it's going to be broader. It's a lot of things. It's what we call in the industry multifactorial. And when we step back and nurture broader, more broadly, different parts, Parts of ourselves from our mindset to our environment, to our sleep, our poop, our blood sugar, we start to be able to shift 
the environment, like I was saying, the terrain that's giving rise to the expression of the symptoms associated with that autoimmune condition. So I have Hashimoto's, like I said, it's knock on wood, completely managed because I'm able to take care of myself and not look for something out, give that agency away to some easy fix. So when we're thinking about autoimmunity, any chronic condition, genes, digestion, inflammation, if we focus just on those three, and that's a lot to focus on, that is enough. But that's where I come to my three tiers And that leads us to the non-negotiable trifecta, deficiency to sufficiency, and dismantling the dysfunction. So let's just focus for a moment in the where to start on the non-negotiables, tier one, which is where we can focus while we're looking for help. The non-negotiables are any non-negotiables we can identify for ourselves. So we can ask ourselves, what makes me feel better? What makes me feel worse? And when we know that, that gives us some of the nutrients that our body needs. And I don't mean vitamins. I mean like all the other life factors, whether it's self-worth or the things that make us feel great, whether it's cuddles or dance class or joy of some sort or being in nature or touching a tree or eating that breakfast every morning, how do we recognize what are my non-negotiables personally? And then again, my non-negotiable trifecta for you is sleep, poop, and blood sugar balance. So let's focus on one, sleep. What's happening around our sleep? What can we do about our sleep? It's not easy. I can't just say, hey, Eileen, sleep. I have to look at your patterns, at your behavior. And I think when we focus more narrowly in an area that impacts us more broadly, we have more opportunity to influence our health outcomes. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense. It's like start from those those basics. 